You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday the 26th of July. Opposition alliance moves no confidence motion against PM Modi's government. Torrential rains wreak havoc in Pakistan and India. And local bodies in Nepal is craft of managing waste and earn money. And now for all the details, the Indian Parliament on Wednesday accepted a no-confidence motion filed by opposition lawmakers against Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government to force him to address in detail the concerns about ethnic violence in Manipur. However, the BJP government enjoys the support of at least 332 lawmakers and faced no threat from the trust vote. The opposition India Alliance has argued while they are aware about the numbers, a no-trust motion will compel the Prime Minister to make a statement in the Parliament. And we want to say to the Prime Minister Modi Ji that we don't come to the outside, we come to the outside, we come to the outside, we come to the outside, क्योंकि ये बात सिर्फ अब मणिपुर की नहीं रह गई है ये बात दूसरे प्रदेशों में फैल रही है राष्ट्रीय सुरक्षा और देश की अखंडता के हित में प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी को दे, सदन के अंदर आकर आप देश को संबोधित करना चाहिए the parliamentary business has been paralyzed since the beginning of monsoon session as opposition has been adamant over their demand for PM Modi's statement on Manipur. The government has said it is ready to hold discussion and has offered a statement from Home Minister Amit Shah saying internal security is his ministry's responsibility. PM Modi had not commented in public about the violence until last week when a video showing two women being paraded naked and molested by a mob in Manipur surfaced. India's Defence Minister Rajna Singh on Wednesday warned Pakistan of a stern reply by Indian armed forces if the country's interests are undermined by Islamabad. The Defence Minister, who led the country in a somber commemoration event of the Kargil Victory Day, said that India was capable of crossing the line of control during the 1999 Indo-Pak War, but refrained due to its commitment for peace and international laws. Singh said New Delhi was backstabbed by Pakistan that time, which imposed the war on India. He said India will go to any extreme to maintain its dignity and honour and if the need arises can also cross the LOC to take action inside the enemy's territory. If we didn't cross the LOC, it didn't mean that we couldn't cross the LOC. We could cross the LOC and we could cross the LOC. And if we had to cross the LOC, we would cross the LOC. And I would like to say that कि हम यलोसी पार कर सकते थे हम यलोसी पार कर सकते हैं यदि हमें छेड़ा गया और जरूरत पड़ी तो भविष्य में हम यलोसी पार करेंगे इसका मैं देशवासियों को अपनी तरफ से विश्वास दिलाना चाहता हूं Situated in the north of Pakistan's occupied region, mountains in the Kargil region witnessed two months long armed conflict between India and Pakistan. At least 527 Indian soldiers were killed in action in the operation aimed to push back intruders occupying the vantage points. Moving on, torrential rains have wreaked havoc in both Pakistan and India, forcing evacuations and leaving behind a trail of destruction. A report. Villagers in Pakistan's eastern Punjab province on Tuesday struggled with severe flooding triggered by heavy monsoon rains, which has submerged fields and homes in the region. Residents of Nanodogar village have been stranded by surrounding floodwaters and swollen rivers, forcing them to rely on boats for transportation and evacuations. Several residents could be seen moving their livestock from their homes. मुश्किल दे बिचों ऐसी हो नहीं नहीं गुजरे हैं जो तो चांद के पानी है यार ना तो बड़ी मुश्किल दे बिचों माल जानवर जड़े सही साड़े सी ना साड़े नाल सहार दे लोग भी आए साड़े को ना ऐन जब बेड़ियां ले के आए ने मदद साड़ी की थी ने Meanwhile in India, flash floods brought by a cloud burst tore down several houses and washed away cattle in a hamlet in Kullu district of Himachal Pradesh. Heavy rains and landslides in the northern state earlier this month damaged farms, destroyed roads, power lines and infrastructure worth $550 million. 
More than 80 people have also lost their lives in the deluge since June. Amid an alarming situation of malnutrition and hunger in Afghanistan, the UN World Food Programme has cut 8 to 8 million food insecure people due to lack of funding. A report stated the World Food Programme estimates that at least $1.2 billion is needed to tackle rising hunger and malnutrition and 1.4 million new expectant mothers, toddlers and preschoolers are no longer receiving food to prevent malnutrition. The WFP has warned that if funding gaps are not met, then the organization's food aid budget will run out of the end of October. The funding has shrunk amid restrictions by the Taliban administration and foreign sanctions. Moving on, SNP Global Ratings has lowered Bangladesh's long-term rating outlook to negative from stable, citing risks the country's external liquidity position could deteriorate in the next year, while foreign exchange reserves remain under pressure. Bangladesh's GDP growth fell to 6.03% in the financial year that ended in June 2023. The South Asian nation is struggling to pay for imported fuel because of a dollar shortage and its dollar reserves have shrunk by more than a third to stand at $29.85 billion. Bangladesh needs favourable trade and financial flows to stabilise its external settings in the next 12 months, the agency said. The country of nearly 117 million people have already had to secure a $4.7 billion IMF loan this year. And the Sri Lanka Navy has arrested nine Indian fishermen and seized their two trawlers for allegedly breaching the international maritime boundary line and illegally fishing in the island's northern waters. The Navy in a statement said that the Indian fishermen will be handed over to the Meladi Fisheries Inspector for onward legal proceedings. This is the second such incident this month. India and Sri Lanka share an expansive oceanic border without any perspicable demarcation. Fishermen from both the countries frequently stray into each other's territory while netting their catch and end up spending years in jails. The municipality bodies in Nepal's two districts have aced the craft of managing waste and earn money out of it by selling it for reuse. A report. Waste management has been a painstaking task for the Nepal government. But municipality bodies in Siangja and Rupandehi districts have been earning millions of rupees by using different models of managing it, involving the locals. Residents in Wailing municipalities segregate their daily waste into degradable, non-degradable and glasses. The garbage is then brought to the cleanliness center where it is further segregated, packed and sold to businesses which recycle it. The solid waste from households is also collected and turned into vermi compost while the liquid is turned into drinkable water undergoing series of steps. Meanwhile, about 105 kilometers away, the Tilotama municipality in Rupandehi has set up its own waste processing center in a former dumping site. The centre has been selling about 35 different items from plastic to metallurgies and glasses. Price for these items vary from Rs 2 to 500 per kilogram depending on the type and nature of the item. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.